Hello, I'm Shane Tucker. I'm one of the paleontologists here at the University of Nebraska State Museum. And today I thought I'd tell you a little bit about myself, how I got interested in paleontology and some of the fossils that we have on display here at our display museum in Morrill Hall. So uh, here we are. Nebraska is right here in the center of the country. I don't know where you guys are watching from today, but we're right here in the center of the country. And Nebraska is extremely rich in fossil resources. We have fossils from 91 of the 93 Nebraska counties. So whenever the ground is disrupted, whether it's building a parking lot, um, building a foundation for a home, or even during highway construction, there's a good chance that fossils will be uncovered. And so for my job here at the university, I'm the state's highway paleontologist and I monitor active highway construction projects, looking for any fossils that might be uncovered, and then studying the fossils that were uncovered trying to provide clues about Nebraska's past. So I'm out making observations, taking notes, and then uh, making hypotheses and, and uh, determining what these animals were like and what Nebraska was like many thousands or millions of years ago. And so uh, one thing I wanted to tell you guys about too is my background as a kid, I grew up being outdoors a lot. My family liked to camp and fish. So whenever we're out at the lake, if the fish weren't biting, I'd go wander off on my own and just kind of explore looking at the rocks on the shoreline. And at one particular lake in southeastern Nebraska, there were a lot of clamshells that were there. And I knew they were extremely old, but I didn't know how old or, or how they were put there in the first place. So when I came to the University of Nebraska to study geology, I quickly found out that those uh, clamshells uh, were deposited at the bottom of a sea that covered Nebraska uh, somewhere between 82 and 87 million years ago. And so uh, that's kind of how I got interested in it. And throughout this uh, presentation, if you have any questions, please uh, send those questions to us in the box below and we'll answer those for you over the next few days. Um, one other example of, of, uh, uh, of a fossil here in Nebraska I think is important is this particular tooth here. Now this tooth doesn't look complete. It's just a portion of a tooth, but it's extremely important. And it was discovered by an eight year old that discovered this tooth in his driveway. He lived out in the country and every time they dump gravel on his driveway, he'd go out looking for fossils. And he recognized that this looked different from the other fossils that he was typically finding, which were animals from the ice age and uh, brought it into the museum. And it's one of two dinosaur fossils that we have here in our museum's collection. It was probably a tooth from a meat eater, probably something related to a tyrannosaur of some kind, uh, roughly uh, 100 million years ago. Now, the majority of time when dinosaurs were around, at the end of the age of dinosaurs, Nebraska was covered by a shallow sea. And we'd be right in the middle of it. It was a shallow sea that stretched all the way from the Gulf of Mexico to at times all the way up to the uh, Arctic Ocean. And uh, the sea level would rise and fall at various times in the past. But the majority of what we find from uh, 100 million years ago to 70 million years ago is evidence of animals that lived in this inland sea. And one of those two animals that I wanted to talk about today uh, that I have a cast of here is a lower jaw of an animal called a mosasaur. And this is a, a specimen that was collected off of a road cut at one of the state parks in northeastern Nebraska. And so uh, in this case here, what we can see is the portion of the skeleton that was recovered by the paleontologist, the highway paleontologist back in the late 1980s. Now this was one that was discovered by employees at the Nebraska Game and Park Commission that worked at this park. And they noticed there was a few bones on a road cut, contacted the museum. The mu museum went out and excavated it, collected the skull, lower jaw, and a portion of the front paddle, as well as some of the backbones and ribs. And so this is uh, an animal that would probably be 25 to 30 feet long, um, would look, um, have two paddles on the front, have a skull that almost looks like either a snake or a crocodile, but this is definitely a marine reptile. And up above my head here, we can see one uh, along the wall there. So an extremely long animal that was probably one of the top predators in the ocean during the end of the age of dinosaurs right here in Nebraska. Now, the other animal that I wanted to talk about today was an animal called a plesiosaur. And this one's uh, one of the backbones right in the lower portion of the back 
of uh, one of these plesiosaurs that lived 70 million years ago in this seaway. And um, the story behind this, this was off of a road cut. The highway construction project went through and made the road cuts. And there was a science teacher from Texas that was up visiting family over his Christmas vacation. And so he went out and walked on the road cut looking for a shark's teeth. And what he noticed were five of these backbones laying on the surface. And he contacted the museum. We went out there in 2003 and excavated the middle third of one of these long necked plesiosaurs that would probably be 35 to 40 feet long. And this is one of only six plesiosaurs that we have a significant portion of the skeleton here in Nebraska. And it's also buried in a layer of rock called chalk. And in that chalk, it has billions of skeletons of microscopic plankton that are able to be dated based on the species that are there. And we we're told that this uh, plesiosaur lived roughly 70 million years ago. Now, one of the other fun things about this plesiosaur that we had in addition to the bones is when we were excavating right near the ribs, we found all of these rocks that were kind of glued or stuck to the ribs with crystals. And here are just a few of them. These are actual uh, stomach stones, or we call them gastroliths. And these animals actually would swim up rivers, swallow mouthfuls of pebbles, and then go swim out in the middle of the ocean. And they would just catch fish, eat fish, and then swallow them more or less. And then the stomach stones would help grind it up and process it in their stomachs. And in this particular animal, we found several hundred of these, these stomach stones um, in, the, in the remains. If you want to see this portion or this skeleton, a uh, portion of it is on display up at Ashfall Fossil Beds, which is very close to where the uh, skeleton was actually uh, discovered originally. And we have some stomach stones here on the floor, and another one of these uh, plesiosaurs with an extremely long neck uh, that was collected not too far from Lincoln um, back in the 1960s. Uh, we know that the, there were probably plesiosaurs and mosasaurs uh, noted in the journals. We know that they were noted in the journals of Lewis and Clark on their journeys up the Missouri River where they were talking about fish that were 35 feet long in the banks. And so um, both of those were around in the oceans. These are just a couple examples of those that we find right here in Nebraska. So, uh, Today, uh, you know, we talked about a couple of these animals that we uh, can tell that Nebraska had seas covering it in the geologic past. And if you have any questions, please be sure to, to leave, leave your questions in the thread line or in the box below. And paleontologists and educators here at the museum will be able to answer those questions for you over the next few days. Thank you very much. Have a good day.